in the hop fields right prior to harvesting, the air just kind of smells of it. And I think that is one of the most exciting things about this time of year is being able to really experience that aroma. The way fresh hops are done in the Northwest, where you get to go down to your hop farm, pick the, the hops off the vine and have them at your brewery just within a couple hours, is really the way fresh hops were developed. It's something that came from here. My great-great-grandfather, Charles, came up into this area in the late 1860s, and uh, soon after he started planting hops. So we have a long history of hops in our family. If you were to cut my arm, you'd probably get a little green blood out of it. There's many things that go into the production of hops, and each one of them is just a part of the system. You need sunlight. You need water and they need to be irrigated on time. We also need really good soil. The Britt family and our family thought, uh, we've got a beautiful area here. How can we find a flavor or a taste that is organically produced? And out of that concept, we began to plant a little bit of hops here in Kewichi Canyon. The next year we were producing a crop and we decided, well, what are we gonna do with them? So we went looking for a, a brewery. The brewery wasn't even a year old. We were only had been brewing for about six, six months. Why couldn't I find organic hops? I was running an organic brewery. Why can I not find organic hops? It doesn't make any sense. They heard about that. I uh, picked up the phone and took a phone call one day. I heard you want to talk about organic hops. Um, We've been growing hops longer than any other family in the United States. We'd like to talk with you because we have a place and a project. We just need someone who gets it and who's passionate about it. The Toa of Kawichi Canyon is geologically unique. You're on two different sides of two different epochs, two different worlds, geologically speaking. And the soil itself is really rich and minerally. We wanted to prove that there's a unique geology, unique chemistry to the soil and unique growing environment in the Brit farm that would generate different characters in the hops. There's something to that canyon that makes for really expressive hops. The hops coming out of there are just supercharged versions of their variety. Those aromas stay in the beer longer. And I think it's gotta be the climate in the canyon, coupled with the organic growing practices. This uh, block is very unique in that, as far as we can tell, it's never had any pesticides applied to this land. I think it's also special in that somebody had the foresight to protect it. I think more and more people care about what they're consuming and where it comes from. And so when the Brits and Carpenters and Fremont got together, part of the, the work that they've done has always been to give back to the Conservancy, this land that produces this amazing beer. We wanted to kind of show how agriculture and a Conservancy group could really get along. Not only does the label tell people about the land that the beer comes from, but people know that when they're drinking it, they're also supporting land conservation and protecting a wild space. Fresh hop brewing is definitely labor of love, especially with Kuichi. It's out in the middle of nowhere, essentially. It's not set up to be easily processed. Much smaller, lower binds, more sensitive and tighter fields. This is not commercially how you know hops are really grown. It requires some sacrifice on Fremont's end to bring in these hops. But we've worked with growers to make it all work, and we're constantly improving with one another. We bring up a, a machine we call a Kawichi Cruncher up here, which is a machine that my brother designed, kind of a, a mini unit of what you see stationed at each hop farm. And so we pull it up here every year to kind of specifically pick this small acreage of hops. Ultimately, we're working, you know, at the whim of Mother Nature and the harvest schedule. You go out in a hop field with a hop grower, they're going to pull off a hop and tear it open and smell it. Really, what you're trying to find as you crack open that cone in a field, is it ready? Is it close?
That morning, you got the crew here ready to go when, when daylight comes in, and they're a race for time to try to get it off. Essentially, the hops will be harvested in the morning, get loaded into a refrigerated container, and then make the two and a half, three hour trip uh, across the mountains. As soon as they get here, we've got our guys ready to go. What we really try to focus on is just getting the hops integrated into the brewing process within 24 to 36 hours. Coordinating that, the shipping, the people, the machines, the harvest, the brewery, all of that takes a lot of teamwork, a lot of dedication. Somehow it all comes together every year. After all these years, we now have what is one of the most exciting projects collectively as farmers and brewers every year. We're getting the best ingredients. And we know that because we have these intimate relationships with the people that grow it. This is a closed circle. So every hop that's grown, every pound, every cone that comes out is used by Fremont in the Quitchy Canyon Fresh Hop Beer. So all that uh, you can look back on and really feel good about what you're doing. Because when you see a consumer raise that glass and take a drink of Quitchy Canyon, they, that's my favorite beer. I mean, that, that makes it worth it right there. This is a sustainable hop production operation that produces great beer. <laughs>